Welcome to WCPO's Lounge Acts. I'm your host, Billboard Senior Contributor Gil Kaufman. Today in the Digital Lounge, we are happy to have uh, Brian Olive. How you doing, Brian? Good. Thank Brian you. Brian is uh, Cincinnati's own musical polymath. He's, uh, he's a producer, he's a writer, he's a singer. He plays everything, he has a studio. And today he's going to be talking to us about his upcoming third solo album. And he's joined today in the uh, Digital Lounge with probably the biggest band we've seen in here so far. Well, we're, we're excited to have you all here today in the Digital Lounge. Um, we're going to be talking to Brian, uh, who you might know from the Greenhorns and Detroit Soledad Brothers. You also might know his two previous solo albums, his work on Dr. John's Grammy-winning Lockdown from 2012. Today, we're excited to have Brian with us because he's going to be talking about his third solo album, Living on Top, which is coming out right April 28th. The record release show is at the... Uh, at the Woodward Theater and over the Rhine, where he'll be playing with Pop Empire and Royal Holland, and I assume maybe some of these folks as well. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to hear a couple songs from the new album, um, and then we'll talk with Brian a little bit afterwards. Tell us what we're going to hear, Brian. Uh, this first song is called Living on Top. Of course, it's the uh, t title track, and uh, it's been around for a while. Just reworked it for this album. All right, cool. And then we're also going to hear It's a Lie. Uh, if you're watching us now on Facebook or you're listening later on, this is your first opportunity to hear these songs, so enjoy.
Thank you. Uh, Thank you. If you're just joining us, that was Brian Olive and his band giving us a little bit of Sunday Soul uh, with It's a Lie. Those are a couple of songs here, the title track from Brian's upcoming album, Living on Top. Um, so tell me about this album, Brian. You've been working on this, sounds like, for a couple of years now. Yeah, I started working on it. Tim, when we start working on it? Uh, November of 2014? <laughs> I thought I was going to say 15. Yeah, it's been a while, but uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, well, there were a few things that were, you know, getting in the way, you know, like some issues with the old studio, and, you know, I'm not going into all that, but, uh, yeah, uh, it was worth the, taking the time to do because I, I like the way this one turned out. It, it sounds like it was worth it. You, now, you started doing this at your old studio, The Diamond, is that right? Yeah, you started the Diamond, doing it. Yeah. And so tell me about that studio. You're kind of phasing that one out, and you're starting a new one. What's that studio like? I mean, could you describe it for people who, who've not been there? Uh, it sounds like, it sounds like it's, it's got, like, some character. Well, you look at this room, uh, take about an eighth of this room, and that's the whole size of it, pretty much. <laughs> and if you're listening on the podcast... This oh, is yeah, not a big room. Yeah. yeah, this um, is not a big room. <laughs> yeah, it's a very small place, but we were actually able to do a lot of things there. You know, like uh, we did the, both Electric Citizen albums there, Perfect Children, uh, just a ton of stuff. We did Yusef's album, um, and you know, it was it's it was a good place that served its purpose and it sounded good. Uh, but it's just one of those things is like you know, enough's enough, and it's time to to move into a better spot. And that's what we got. We got a place on the, on the uh, edge of uh, Mount Airy Forest. It's a studio called Mount Saturn. Nice. We'll, t we'll talk about that studio a little bit uh, later. But what was interesting to me about this album is I know that, that you're a person, you're a very hands-on person. You wrote, produced, played almost everything on this album. Is that right? Uh, a lot. A lot of things. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Is, that, is that important to you to have your hands kind of in, in, every, in everything like that? Is that something that's, that, you know, you've always kind of done that. Is, is that important to you? I honestly don't care i just i just if i got an idea and i want to hear how it's you know, if it's if i can do it i'll do it or if someone else can do it you know if there's someone else there i'll probably have them do it yeah. you know because i don't really feel like doing everything <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it's also not often that you see that the lead singer and guitarist pick up the saxophone you know like that's it, it seems like you're a guy who you know you like to be in in the mix a little yeah. bit yeah i mean yeah i like playing sax yeah. Yeah. yeah um so tell me about why you know why this album it, it kind of has like a I, I kept thinking about i don't know why i don't even really know much mitch Ryder, but it kept reminding me a little bit of mitch Ryder, kind of you know kind of a little bit motown kind of feel to it yeah, but also you know yeah, that kind of like soul guy sound doing soul well but, yeah you know, sure yeah. okay you said it i didn't say it but <laughs> yeah, sure i mean yeah that's what that's what he is and you know like i i, I don't know i like i like him I, I was i probably listened to the same music that he listened to right growing you know growing sure, up sure. you know like uh Motown and you know old R and B stuff. You know, I, I still listen to that more than. I mean, I don't really know much about what's going on with new music. I, you know, sometimes I hear good things, but that's all I'll say. No. You've heard there's good music out there. I've heard it's good, and, yeah. I, and I've heard it, and it's, yeah. and it's good. So you know, um, it's good. why do you think that 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 era or you know that kind of music has has been such a touchstone for you for so long? Like, what is it about that that music that has stuck with you for so long and been so important to you? I, mean, I, th I think maybe when I saw the Blues Brothers when I was five, and I didn't know who those people were, you know. Oh, yeah. and I, Before the on, internet. Right, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I you know, asked who they were, and my parents, and you know, like, oh, that's Ray Charles. Well, that's... So I like, you know, Aretha Frank. It's like everybody was in that, and I, I, that's the first thing that I can think of that really got me, you know, tuned into that stuff. I remember James Brown, you know, like, James like, Brown's like that scene, you know, yeah. you're just like, wow, who's, I got to find out about that guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I saw that movie and I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, <laughs> wow. That's try cool. To, you know, see. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and there's, so on the new album, it's all original stuff, but you have one cover on it. You do the par uh, Parliament song. Is that right? Yeah. It's called A New Day Begins. It's oh. a, it's sort of, it's in there. Uh, I think it's in the time when they were transforming from a doo-wop band yeah. into what we know as you know, funkadelic. Right. You know? So it's this in-between world, like kind of like Rubber Soul was for the Beatles, yeah. you know, sort of in, in their in a, in between like twilight area of existence or, you know, or musical existence. And what was it about that song? So why that song? Like, why was that interesting to you? I like the bridge. I like the whole song, but the, the bridge is, is very odd. And like, it always, I don't know, the lyrics are great too. I mean, yeah. It's like a song of like, you know, like we, Messed, no, we, I messed up our love. Let's try to, you know, 
can, can we just try in a new, new day beginning? It's nice. <laughs> you didn't know that was a cover? Yusuf just ran oh. out it was a cover. <laughs> So uh, we're here in the Digital Lounge with Brian Olive, who's talking to us about uh, the songs from his third solo album, Living on Top, which you can hear him play uh, with the rest of the band at the Woodward Theater on Friday. Um, tell us a little bit about, you mentioned that you have this new studio, Mount Saturn. Why was it time to change things up, and, and you know, how is this studio different from, from your original studio? Um, well, I think, actually, the, the building that the old studio is in, I mean, it looks like it's going to fall down sometimes. Yeah. So I wanted to get out before then. Um, Seems and, like a good idea. Yeah, and the, the spot that we got for the studio is, uh, it's a nice place because it's, uh, you know, like you walk up on a hill and you, you can see the comet, you know, and the comet bar. And, uh, but it's just forest as far as you can see behind you. So you're, you're like in the forest, but you walk down the street, you're back in the city. So it's got like a you know, sort of a rural feel, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was after that spot for five years. I tracked it every single day until I finally found that the bank came up off of it, and I jumped on it and bought it. Nice. So you had, you had it in mind. You're like, this is going to be my place. Yeah. And I hear that it's kind of a, a place where artists can chill out a little bit, and there's some space for them there. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's definitely going to have uh, accommodations for artists to stay and, stay and play. I know that you did a, uh, a, pledge, you know, a pledge drive for this album. I, I also noticed that you roped in Jerry Springer. To help you with a yeah. video, it's me and uh, Scott. I was wondering about that. I was wondering how. What's that hook up there? You know. Well, I, my manager Leah said uh, we were talking about maybe you know because I didn't want. I tried to do this like testimonial thing where I'm sitting there going, "Hey guys, I just want you to <laughs> listen to my music." And and I sent it to her. She was like, "This is awful." I was like, "I know it's awful. That's why I don't want to do it." And anyway, I said, "Well, what about getting uh, someone to interview?" And and she said, who would you get? And I said, I was like, I'm going to get Jerry Springer to do it. I know where he is on Wednesday nights. <laughs> and so we went and we like kind of bombarded him. And, and uh, well, actually, I got to play the show, too, which was yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, that's so he does like a podcast, right? It's yeah. Like a radio yeah, he's got show a lot, of good, a lot yeah. of good music on that. Yeah. So that's cool. So you were like, I'll play your show and then you come and you know, do a little. Well, he didn't me. know he was going to do the interview. <laughs> oh, yeah. We just, yeah, renegades. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, the, the, the songs you played so far, they also, we mentioned, you know, before I mentioned Mitch Ryder, I know James, it's got a little bit of James Gang kind of mixed in with Motown. I mean, what can yeah. people expect from this album? Is it that kind of psychedelic soul? Is that, is that what, what you're after on this one? Yeah. That's yeah. your mode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I also thought it was funny on this album, on, on your site, you mentioned it as kind of, and, you know, encompassing your entire entire musical journey, you know, kind of putting the Greenhorns in there and, and Soledad Brothers when you worked with Dr. John, but I also saw you mention, like, African Rhythms and some pop in there. I mean, how do you how do you get all that into a cohesive whole? Uh, well, I guess you take three years to mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known, I just yeah, didn't know one coming. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I felt like I had I'd done all these things and, you know, when I got done with the Soledad Brothers, it was like we just all we did was rock, rock, rock every night. You know, out on tour, and it was great. I loved it. But uh, when I, I was like, I'm gonna make a solo album. I want to do something mellow. You know, and so I tried to make like more of a mellow pop album, and I like that. And uh, the next one was slightly different, same kind of thing. I don't know. It's just uh, I felt like uh, it felt like that rock feeling like creeping back up in me. You know, and on the movie EP too, like that. That was more like rock and roll, I guess, funk than anything. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just like it all it kind of came full circle, I guess, sort of. And we were talking about before, you are kind of doing a pledge effort on this album. You're asking yeah. fans to, to put their money, you know, promise, this. Promise to buy the record. Yeah. So how does that work? What, what can people do or what, you know, what should they do if they want to make sure they get their hands on the album? They can go on pledgemusic.com and, you know, just put my name in and... Uh, and you can see it's like there's all kinds of things for, for sale. And you just basically order it. And, you know, when the new album comes out, we'll send it to you. And there's also, uh, I got an email about there's kind of a special vinyl edition or a special edition that will be available at the show. There's going to be a limited edition of those. Yeah, there are, I believe, 40. 45 is what I was thinking. 45. That's Damn. what I was trying to keep some. Uh, <laughs> 45 uh, test pressings of the new album, Living on Top. It's a 12-inch, uh, it's an orange, clear vinyl. Nice. Yeah. Well, 
if you're just joining us, we're here in the Digital Lounge today. The WCPO Digital Lounge is Brian Olive and his band. They're playing us some songs from Living on Top. Uh, you can listen to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your, your podcast these days. We're going to have these guys play a couple more songs for us. We'll talk to them a little bit more about the Woodward Show on the other side. Uh, t- tell us what we're going to hear now, Brian. We're going to hear two more new songs. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, this next one we're going to do is called Say What You Want. And uh, the last one is called Loud and Low. Cool. Well, uh, we'll check them out, and then we'll talk to you on the, on the other side. All right. Thanks. I was a lonely man When you found me, I didn't know I begin to see the mystery to end all my sorrow. Say what you want, but don't say goodbye. There is no reason to run away and hide. You That the world had done And the bitter sting That living brings Well I feel this no longer Say what you want But don't say goodbye
you're just tuning in to Lounge X, that was your dose of Sunday soul right there. Uh, we heard Say What You Want and uh, Loud and Low, both from Brian's upcoming third solo album, Living on Top. And Brian, tell us a little bit about the show at the Woodward Theater on Friday. You don't play a ton of shows, or you haven't played a ton of shows lately. This is probably the first time a lot of people have seen you, uh, you know, gotten a chance to see you live. What are people going to hear at the show? Are they going to hear just new stuff? Are they going to hear a mix of stuff from out, throughout your career? Yeah, I'm, we're, we're going to play the songs you heard today and the rest of the new album. And then we're going to play some tracks off of the movie EP that came out, or uh, well, the vinyl just came out a few months ago. We're going to have that available, too. And then, yeah, some songs from the first two records as well. Nice. So it'll be a, a full solo kind of retrospective. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So the show, again, is uh, Brian Olive's Living on Top album release show Friday at the Woodward Theater. You're also uh, going to have a couple other uh, friends of yours. Or who, are the, who are the other bands who are playing on the, on the bill with you? Yeah, some good bands that I, you know, people I know from around town, friends. Uh, Pop Empire and Royal Holland. Cool. Uh, tickets are $7 advance, $10 day of the show. Doors at 8 show at nine. Um, for people who want to get the album, is there somewhere they can go and, and pledge now? You mentioned it before, but is there somewhere they can go and do that? Yeah, it's uh, pledgemusic.com. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, Brian and crew, uh, this is a very impressive crew he's got here. They'll be with him in fr on Friday at the Woodward Theater. Thank you guys for coming in. That was, uh, that was just what I needed today, and I, hopefully just what everybody needed to hear this morning. And uh, we're excited to hear the rest of the album. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.